The natural language framework provides natural text analysis features. You don't have to know about concepts like the hidden Markov model, representation learning, or deep neural networks to integrate natural language processing capabilities into your apps. Here's a sneak peek at what we're gonna build in this section. First, you'll implement a language recognizer. This one says there is no smoke without fire. Cool, but what language is that? How about this sentence? Is it Japanese or maybe Chinese? We're gonna build an NLP app to answer these questions. Next, you'll build a string tokenizer. This playground project shows how to use NLP to dissect the text into semantic units. Tokenization stands at the core of many other features, so this is an important exercise. Nouns, verbs, and adjectives. You're gonna build a playground project to identify the various parts of speech. We'll check how it works with sentences written in foreign languages. Who's from where? You'll implement a demo that can recognize names, places, and organizations in natural text. All right, so let's dig in. In this lecture, you're gonna create a playground that will recognize the dominant language of a given text. All right, let's open up Xcode and we'll start with the playground. Select iOS at the top and choose the blank template. You could also pick macOS or tvOS since the natural language framework is cross-platform. Name the project Natural Language Demo. Click Create and finish creating the project by saving it to the desktop or your location of choice. Now, the first step is to get rid of this boilerplate code and we need to import the natural language framework. Next, create a string constant that represents the text we wanna analyze. Let string equals, and I'm gonna pick a German string. To identify the language of a text, you can use the NL language recognizer class. So let's use the NL language recognizer class. And the easiest way to find out the dominant language is by using the dominant language for type method. The method takes the text as input and returns an optional NL language instance. So let's pass in our string. The method returns an optional NL language instance. Since it's optional, we need to unwrap it first. You can use optional binding to find out whether the returned optional has a value. And if it returned a result, we're gonna print it to the console. Detected the language value, language dot raw value, and let's uppercase it. As dominant language for and in a new line, let's print our string. All right, and if the method did not return any language, let's print that too. Else, print could not recognize language for our string. Okay, we've got a slight problem here. Let's fix it quickly and the error should be gone. Now let's execute the playground. It recognized the dominant language correctly because Ich wünsche dir einen guten Morgen is indeed German. DE stands for Deutsch, that is German. You can test the recognizer with various foreign languages. Let's try this one. It was identified correctly as Hebrew. Or try this. ZH hand stands for traditional Chinese. You can check the following link for language codes. All right, so we managed to identify the dominant language of a text, that is, the most likely language. You can also find out a set of language candidates and their probabilities. First, you create an NL language recognizer instance. Let language recognizer equals and a language recognizer. Next, you call the process string instance method and pass in the text. 
the language hypothesis with maximum returns a dictionary with language probability pairs. Let's call it let language probabilities equals language recognizer dot language hypothesis with maximum and let's say that we're only interested in the first three language pairs. And now let's iterate through the return dictionary if it has any values for, and I'm going to use a tuple. The language is the key and the probability is the value in language probabilities. And I'm going to print the detected language and its probability. Finally, you should restore the NL language recognizer object to its initial state to use it for further text analysis. Language recognizer dot reset. Now let's execute our playground. And here you can see the result of the second call. Traditional Chinese has the highest probability. It's almost 100%. Then comes Japanese. And finally, there is only a tiny chance that the text language is simplified Chinese. The language constraints property lets you constrain the identified languages. For example, you might want to only detect English, Spanish, and simplified Chinese. You can do that by saying language recognizer dot language constraints equals, and I provide the constraints which are English, Spanish, and simplified Chinese. Since I constrain the languages to simplify Chinese, Spanish, and English, the detector returned the highest probability for simplified Chinese. As you can see, NL Language Recognizer provides a straightforward interface to detect the language of text snippets with minimal coding. In Xcode, choose File, New, Playground page. Let's reveal the project navigator and I'm going to call this String Tokenizer. Again, let's get rid of the boilerplate code that was generated by Xcode and I import the natural language framework. Next, we'll create a string constant that text equal a great quote by the way now to tokenize a string you need an nl tagger instance nl tagger is a class that supports different languages you can use it to segment a text into units like words sentences or paragraphs it can also identify the lexical class or other properties of the detected units. So let's create the NL tagger object. Let tagger equals NL tagger. We need to initialize NL tagger with a list of tag schemes. These tag schemes specify the type of tags you're interested in. To simply retrieve the tokens from a text, the tag scheme array should have a single element, nl tag scheme dot token type. Next, set the tagger's string property to the text you want to analyze. Tagger dot string equals our text. Use the enumerate tags method to retrieve the tokens from a given range of the string. The first parameter is the range to analyze. Since we want to parse the entire string, the range should start at the first index. So I'm going to provide the first index, text.start index up to, but not including the last index, which is text.end index. The next argument is the linguistic unit. Use NL token unit word to enumerate for words and use nl tag scheme token type for the tag scheme the enumerate tags method has also an optional options parameter options and let's provide the array 
So we want to omit punctuation and white spaces. The last parameter is a block that's applied to ranges of the string. The block has a tag argument that provides the linguistic tag and a token range argument, which gives the range of the tag. In this demo, you will only use the token range argument to retrieve the word at the given position. The block's final argument is a reference to a Boolean value. Return true to continue processing the set. If you return false from within the block, enumerate tags stops the processing. And we print the token found at that range. And return true. Now let's execute the playground. And here we go. Let's try it with a different input. We run it, and I assume it works as expected. NL tagger can work with various languages, so you can look up, for example, Hebrew or Japanese proverbs on the internet to test NL tagger's tokenizing capabilities. Tokenizing a string is an important feature in natural text analysis, but NL tagger has further, more exciting features. So let's explore them. Open the natural language demo playground and create a new playground page. File, new, playground page. Name it parts of speech. Let's remove the generated code. Next, copy and paste the code from the string tokenizer playground page you implemented in the previous lesson. I select the entire code using command A and I copy it to the pasteboard, select the parts of speech playground page and paste it here. Alternatively, you can open the project from exercise files, chapter three, three, four, begin. Now change the initialization of the NL tagger instance from NL tagger text schemes, NL text scheme token type to NL tagger tag schemes, and let's provide different values. This is an array, so we can choose different options here. I'm gonna provide lexical class. We're also interested in the language, and let's also recognize scripts. The lexical class tag scheme lets you find out whether a token is a part of speech, punctuation, or white space. Language provides well the language, and script supplies the script identifier for the token. For example, Latin for Latin script, or hence for simplified Chinese. And now insert the following code before returning from the enumerate tags methods block. Print tag, it's optional, so we have to use it like this, dot raw value, and if the tag is nil, we'll print unknown. We need to change the scheme parameters value to NL tag scheme lexical class. So instead of token type, we need lexical class. Now let's run the modified code and check the console log. Let's try it with a different text. All right, it works nicely with English text. NL tagger recognized correctly that knowledge is a noun, will is a verb, give is a verb, you pronoun, and so on. As an exercise, change the enumerate tag scheme to NL tag scheme language and then to NL tag scheme script. Experiment with text written in various languages like Japanese or Hebrew. NL tagger usually enumerates the tags regardless of the text's language and identifies the language and the script accurately. Use this class to segment natural text and identify parts of speech in your apps. In this lecture, you're gonna implement a demo that can identify names, places, and organizations in natural text. Open the Natural Language Demo Playground and create a new Playground page called Semantic Units. File, New, uh, New Playground page, and let's call it Semantic Units. 
Again, I'm gonna get rid of this boilerplate code and copy and paste the code from the parts of speech playground page we implemented in the previous lesson. Command A, Command C, and let's go back to our semantic units page and Command V. You can also open the project from exercise files, chapter 3, 3, 5, begin. Now I'm gonna replace the text constant with the following. Next, update the tagger initializer to use the name type tag scheme. I'm gonna remove these values and instead use the name type. Change the enumerate tag scheme parameter to NL tag scheme name type 2. Instead of lexical class, we'll use name type. All right, let's execute the playground page. Awesome, isn't it? So NL tagger detected correctly the personal names, the organizations, and the places within the string. As an exercise, change the NL tag scheme name type to NL tag scheme name type or lexical class. Add the NL tagger options join names to the list of enumerate tags options and rerun the demo. Impressive, right? Throughout this chapter, we explored the capabilities of the natural language framework. Natural language processing relies on complex algorithms, but this complexity remains hidden behind a simple and user-friendly API.